Eight years ago, the Ministry of Ethics and Integrity drafted the National Religious and Faith Organization policy. This policy aimed to regulate the activities of faith-based organizations and established governing body to oversee them, provide guidance, and offer advice when necessary. The biggest confusion which has been going on, not only here, but all over the country, people think that a policy is a law. People think that a policy is now what is going to dictate the control and whatnot, how they should you prepare their someone and the like. No! The religious policy, I told them, and they understood that a policy is just a mega plan of government to solve a problem in an area, in an institution. Currently, in the validation phase, the policy emphasizes inclusivity. Officials say all key stakeholders will be consulted before finalization. However, concerns have already surfaced. During a consultation meeting with the young religious leaders, organized by the International Center for Religious Advocacy and Development, reservations about the original draft were expressed by many. We know that when you touch issues of faith and religion, you are touching matters of conscience. When matters of conscience are suppressed in humanity, the result is that a lot of immorality will spring forth, men will lose honor, the honor for humanity and human life is lost when that, that freedom of worship and faith and conscience is touched. Now, what we have done today is to gather ministers in the youth demographic. And why did we do that? Because the biggest population of Uganda are youth, and we feel that the future belongs to the youth. Prominent pastors like David Chiganda and Michael Chazi attended the meeting, voicing concerns about the policy's redundancy. Churches are not, they are not profit-making entities. They are not there to make money. And it would be a misleading statement and also a view to think that uh, uh, government is not benefiting from churches. Let me start with the tax you're, you're talking about. Every Ugandan is contributes in ways of paying tax. Every Uganda pays taxes. The people that are coming to our churches, mosques, and the other worship places are taxpayers. They have already paid the taxes at their places of work. When they come to church and they give uh, 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 tithe and offering and zakah, they are only contributing to their place of worship to continue to exist. The religions we see here, like the Anglican religion, the Swedish church, the Presbyterian church, those were started by states. A king starts a religion. A president starts a religion. These religions we have in Uganda were started by indigenous individual people. They don't have a common base, they don't have a common root, they cannot be governed by a common top leadership body. And an effort to do that is to give birth to a state religion which is divided. When you're developing a law, you must be clear on what mischief you want to address, what in law what you call mischief. What is the problem you want to address? The remedy must be very clear and the intention of the remedy must be very clear. When you read the draft policy of the national, the current draft uh, national religious and faith based, national religious and faith organizations policy, the mischief is not clear. In their problem statement, they are saying there are five core issues they are addressing. But when you read the policy, there is no justification to address those five issues by creating a unique policy that addresses them. Morality has been handled by the Penal Code Act. Corruption, there is a whole anti-corruption court that even addresses that. There are a plethora of laws that deal with corruption. When you talk about the issue of uh, lack of accountability, there are various laws that, that uh, guide us on accountability. Despite the debate, government maintains its commitment to an inclusive policy. It is a framework which shows you if the problem is in dishonesty, like it has been by some religious leaders, the policy just said that at least in a religious institution, 
let there be transparency. How you put that transparency measure in your institution, in your church, is up to you. The policy dictates there should be transparency. The National Religious and Faith Organization policy remains a work in progress. Whether it will be seen as a necessary reform or an overreach by a government remains to be seen. Ngabo Amon, reporting for ABC TV.